Hello, my loves. Welcome into this video for the new moon in Scorpio solar eclipse. I'm so excited to get started here on this journey. First things first, if you are new, hi, welcome in. It's nice to see you. It's nice to have you here. I do have a tutorial video, how to get the most out of these readings with my tips and tricks and how to engage with this material and your spiritual support team as we receive this guidance. You can watch that video if you feel called, if it feels supportive. It's not necessary, but it is there for you if it feels good to you. For those who are not new, hello y'all, how are you? It's good to have you back here. Thank you so much for being here. As you hopefully already know, it is a pleasure to be offering this service to you, this guidance, this self-understanding through astrology, this connecting with our spiritual support team, our inner knowing through the spiritual sacred tools of the cards. And it's an honor and a joy, and I am so lit up by this Scorpio solar eclipse, and I'm excited to jump in and talk about it. So first, let's talk about new moon energy. New moons always represent for us new beginnings. New cycles are starting. The cycle that's starting is always under the theme of the sign that it's in, and it relates to the house that this energy is happening for us. We'll get more in depth with that house energies in just a moment. So the energy that this new moon is happening in is in the sign of Scorpio. So Scorpio is a fixed sign, which means that it is an unchanging energy. It's also a water sign, which represents the emotional realm. So essentially, the Scorpion energy is fixed water, unchanging emotions. That's this energy of the Scorpion archetype. Now, the scorpion is the totem of the Scorpio energy, and it represents this deep dive into deep knowledge, into deep knowing, that relentless search for truth, diving deep into the core of who we are, why we're here, and really understanding that on a deep, deep level. The scorpion energy also has this energy of flying high, like an eagle or like a phoenix because it has this transformative nature. The Scorpio season happens during All Hallows Eve, which is when the veil is the thinnest between our world and the other side, and it represents this death and rebirth energy. So if you didn't watch the readings for the solar season in Scorpio, where we dive into where Scorpio is occurring in your own chart and you learn more about how to embody that energy and we get guidance from our sport team, I recommend you check out that video after these videos if that feels good and right to you. Now, let's talk about eclipse energy. So the normal lunar phase, lunar cycle is 28 days from one new moon to another, or one full moon to the next. Eclipse energies last us for six months. So this is a new beginning that we're gonna see unfold and experience unfolding over the course of six months. This eclipse is referencing the lunar eclipse when the moon was full in Scorpio six months earlier on May 16th. So this is, this energy here is a culmination of six months prior. I did a reading for that eclipse and I will be reviewing the information that came through from that reading at the end of the videos. So this cycle is going to go from October 25th, which is when this eclipse happens at 649 in the morning, that's Eastern time. And this energy, like I said, is going to be potent for six months. So it's going to last until May 5th, 23, which is going to be another lunar eclipse in Scorpio. More time to focus on this energy and utilize these powerful eclipse portals to move us forward in our personal goals in, and in our collective goals. Now, before we dive deep into this energy, into this information that's coming through here, I want to take a moment to talk about a cycle that's much, much larger that I haven't really talked about before this moment. 
So we are in a cycle called the great year. And some of you may have heard of this through the age of Aquarius. We're moving out of the age of Pisces and we're moving into the age of Aquarius. The great year actually goes backwards in the Zodiac. So the energy of Aquarius is humanitarian focused. So overarching all of the work that we're doing right now is this energy of supporting humanity, supporting the collective, becoming a united collaborative species. That's the overall theme of all of this energy and all of this work that we are doing on individual levels. It's permeating out into the collective. So this Scorpio new moon solar eclipse wanted me to connect with you and show you the power of prayer. So it doesn't matter what your spiritual beliefs are. You could call this an affirmation. You could call this an intention. You could call this a prayer, a meditation. The word that you use to describe what we're going to do here in just a moment is up to you to determine. And you can work with your spiritual support team in ways that feel good and right for you. But what I was receiving was that this powerful solar eclipse is a moment for us to make a wish, to start something new. And I'm inviting all of us watching these videos to take a moment and to set aside our personal goals, our personal life, whatever's going on on an individual basis, and set a prayer, set an intention for humanity with this solar eclipse. My prayer, my intention is that our entire human family wake up to the truth of our collaborative, loving, and selfless natures. This is actually something that I've been learning about scientifically. It is proven, and there is an explanation for why we as a species have been so angry, alienated, competitive, and egocentric, despite our natural desires to be cooperative, to be loving, and to act in service of the whole. So this is my intention and my prayer. I'm going to read what's called the Ho'oponopono prayer. And I invite you to say this prayer with me and hold this intention for our human collective. Again, holding the intention that we all wake up to the truth within us, to our own natures of being collaborative, cooperative, and loving towards our human family as a whole. Here's the prayer. Father, mother, child, as one, if I, my family, relatives, and ancestors have offended you, your family, your relatives, and ancestors in thoughts, words, deeds, and actions, from the beginning of creation to the present, we ask your forgiveness. Let's cleanse, purify, release, cut all the negative memories, blocks, energies, and vibrations. Let's transmute these unwanted energies into pure light. And it is said, it is done and set free. Thank you all for joining me in this collective intention and prayer. I don't normally do this in my videos, but I was really guided to do it. I was really guided to do this. Another reason I think I'm guided to do this is because, as I mentioned, the Scorpio energy is the thinning of the veil. This is the time for us to connect to our ancestors, the ones who did all of this work to get us where we are so that we could wake up to the beautiful freedom and truth of what it is to be a human living in cooperation with other humans on this earth. This is what the age of Aquarius promises us. And each phase that we go through is helping us to move closer and closer to this reality, bringing it into form. So back to the readings. How do you know which reading is for you? Well, you are going to have two readings. 
you're going to first watch the interpretation for where the moon was when you were born. So if you don't know your birth chart information, this is the time for you to watch my tutorial video on how to find your birth chart information on astro.com. You go to that site, enter in your birth data. If you don't know your birth time, please don't stop there. I have a tutorial video linked in that video that'll tell you how to find your birth time so that you can access this all powerful information of the vibration that was in play the moment you took your first breath in this life. So you're gonna watch the interpretation for where the moon was when you were born. And you're also gonna check in to see what house this current eclipse is happening for you. So how do you find that out? I'll explain that in the video. So if you don't know, watch that video too. But you're gonna look for where Scorpio, symbolized by the M with the little pointy tail, occurs at two degrees exactly, 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 exactly in two degrees, okay? And whatever house that's in, you're gonna also watch the video for the house reading. Now, of course, you can skip through the introduction once you've watched it once, and you can skip through where it says house interpretation. Watch the card reading and then scroll ahead, okay? I do timestamps on these videos to help you guys scroll through the information that you don't need or that is repeat and help you to get the most out of this information and not waste any of your time, okay? If after watching the tutorial video, you have questions on how to find this information and what video is right for you, please feel free to reach out. So if you feel called to support me for this information, for this guidance, for the way that it supports you, you can do that in so many ways. You can like, you can comment, you can engage with this material, which helps get me out to more people. You can share this with anyone you think would find it interesting and valuable. And of course, you can support me in my services. I have a weekly chakra meditation service on WhatsApp. It's only $14.40 a month. You can go to devotedandvulnerable.com slash services to sign up for that. I also offer chart readings on that website at that same address, so you can go there. And if you just feel called to offer me a financial contribution out of the goodness of your heart and it feels aligned to you, you can do that at paypal.me slash devotedvulnerable. Link is in the description. So we are going to be getting guidance from the Angel Therapy deck by Doreen Virtue. And we are ready to dive into what our spiritual support team wants us to know about the new beginnings we are starting in the next six months. So this reading is for you if the moon was in Libra when you were born and or if this full moon Scorpio solar eclipse in two degrees Scorpio shows up in your seventh house. So if you haven't already, Taken a few deep breaths, called in your spiritual support team, and opened your heart to receive the guidance that's most aligned for you at this time, I invite you to do that. Pause the video if you need more time. And let's find out what card is here to guide your next six months. Emotional sensitivity. Honor and respect your deep sensitivity as it is a gift to us all. Mmm. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to be jumping into the moon energies here. If you're here for the house reading, you can just scroll ahead to that. All right, my moon in Libra. So I'm going to cover what moon in Libra means. If you're familiar with this energy already, scroll ahead to the card interpretation. So the moon represents our emotions in the astrological story. And the location that it's in represents how our emotions express. So moon in Libra our emotions express themselves through the qualities of Libra, the archetype of Libra, which is the scales. It's this cardinal initiatory energy. Initiatory cardinal energies are the energies that start seasons. So in the Northern Hemisphere, Libra starts fall. And it's the energy of air, which deals with the mentality of our lives, the mental world. So your emotions are initiatory in the mental sphere. You may find that you're emotional when it comes to relationships, when it comes to balance, beauty, harmony, and diplomacy. So let's now relate this to our beautiful emotional sensitivity card. Wow. My beautiful moon in Libras. For the next six months, you're being invited into a hyper-awareness of your emotional sensitivity and a hyper-honoring of it. 
We need your emotional sensitivity. I have absolutely loved the solar season of Libra, feeling into the energies of peace and harmony and beauty. World peace is such a beautiful theme in my life and goal that I am aiming at all of the time with everything that I offer. And I feel that present in the Libra energy. So this might emotionally be very, very important to you. Your relationships with people are very, very important to you. And with our world the way that it is, beauty, harmony, peace, these energies are, are hard to see. They can be, especially with the way that humans can be sometimes, they're so competitive, they're so greedy, they're so self-centered. And that can be really emotionally hard for you. And you're being invited to just honor your sensitivity to those things. Last night, I had such a powerful cleanse and clearing where I just cried. I cried for the children. I cried for the innocence that has been lost through our competitive, greedy, egotistical natures as a human species and my own contribution to that. And I, I just let myself cry. I honored that emotional sensitivity within me. And I let myself be witnessed by my partner in this space of just deep grief and expressing how sensitive I am to the plight of my human family, to the energy of the children and my own knowing that they are not being served in the way that my heart longs to serve them. And so it's energies like this. It's the themes of peace and justice that is so important to the Libra energy and your emotions are wrapped up in this archetype. And so this is so very important to you. And it, it's important for you to honor your sensitivities to these things because you can bring awareness to other people's sensitivities to this issue, to maybe a blind spots that people have. There's a whole phenomenon that happens where a lot of us don't want to look at the darkness of humanity because we're afraid we're never going to get out of that hole. But it's exactly looking at that darkness that's going to help us move into a more conscious, loving, peaceful, harmonious, collaborative energy, like the prayer that I offered at the beginning, the prayer that our human family wakes up to our collective, collaborative, cooperative, loving, and selfless natures. So your sensitivity to the fact that we're not there yet is a guiding light for us all, and you're being invited this solar this solar eclipse phase to really be aware of this sensitivity within you and to express it and to honor it in any other way that feels right for you to honor your sensitivity when it comes to your heart. Where in your life this is going to be most relevant for you is going to be revealed through where two degrees in Scorpio occurs in your chart, which house. So go ahead and watch the reading for that and you'll get a little bit more understanding of this information and guidance. Until then, namaste, the universal light within me salutes and honors that universal light within you. Namaste. All right, seventh house, Scorpio eclipse energies. If you already are familiar with the energy of the seventh house, you can scroll ahead to the interpretation. So the seventh house represents the house of relationships. It represents long-term partners, it represents marriages, contracts, business partners, and enemies, people we don't get along with. It's always one-on-one -on -one relationships. So you're being invited to honor your sensitivity when it comes to your one-on-one -on -one relationships. There's a new energy coming through here with you for this solar eclipse where you're going to be experiencing this new way of relating with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis that honors your emotions, that honors what you feel. Definitely honors whatever energy is coming through for you for the moon reading that came through. So if your one-on-one -on -one relationships aren't honoring your emotions and whatever guidance is coming through for you there, then this is the area of your life that gets to be focused on. You get to bring your emotional sensitivity into your one-on-one -on -one relationships, whether it's a partner that you live with, whether it's family members that you engage with, whether it's friends, but it's all one-on-one -on -one relationships, whether it's at work, 
whether it's with people that you don't like, you're still being honored to, you're invited to honor your emotional sensitivity when it comes to this, because it's a gift to us all. It's a gift. It's your emotional sensitivity is a gift you offer every single person that you engage with on a one-on-one -on -one level. And this is a new awareness, a new assertion that you are going to be diving into during this eclipse energy. Yes. Let's review what the energy of the solar of the lunar eclipse that happened six months ago brought through. And back then I said that that energy was going to last a year because we are going to have a repeat of these eclipses six months from now. So these energies are still in play in addition to the new cycle that's starting with this emotional sensitivity card. Seventh house advice. Holy bananas. <laughs> Seventh house. You got the same card six months ago. Emotional sensitivity was your advice back then. It's still your advice now. The other card that came through at that time was the star card. This is what makes you shine, your emotional sensitivity. Your one-on-one -on -one relationships and the way that your emotional sensitivity navigates your relationships and the gifts that it offers are so very important. It had to be said twice. Go back and watch that reading. I'm inviting everyone to do it if they want to, but you, I'm telling you, go back and watch that reading because this is still relevant for you. This is still important and there's another layer of it another level of it that's being unlocked with the repeat of this card now so think about your last six months and think about what you've learned about your emotional sensitivity and expressing it and how it does make you the shining star and what's the next level of that for you maybe it's that emotional card that came through for you for where this where your moon was when you were born wow comment. Let me know how this is resonating with you. Let me know if you have questions. And as always, namaste. The universal light within me salutes and honors that universal light within you. Namaste.